All right, get your Bible in your hand. Stand this morning. I'm going to take five portions of Scripture today that involve five different women in the Bible. And I'm going to give you a characteristic of each one that not only can apply to the ladies here today, but every man, all of us today, that we all ought to have and we all ought to be. I want you to take your Bible to Exodus chapter number 2. Exodus chapter number 2. We're going to begin there today and I'm going to read about one of the first mothers we run across in the Bible. God used this woman to bring into the world a deliverer for the people of God. Exodus chapter number 2 and verse number 2. If you're there, say amen. amen. The Bible says, And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took uh, for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river's bank. You know the story how those Pharaoh had had those young men to be killed, those babies. And this mother knew there was something special, Moses' mother, something special about her son. And I want to just begin with this particular verse, and I'll go through several as we look in the Word of God this morning. You can be seated. I want to share with you, first of all, when you look here in the Word of God, the Scripture that I started off the sermon with, I want you to see a mother that learned about placement. A mother that learned about placement. You say, preacher, what do you mean by that? This mom knew how important it was to place her son in the perfect will of God for his life. When you think about it, Moses' mom had to take a leap and a step of faith. For she took her son and put him in the river, in that basket. And the river took him down. And of course you know uh, that Pharaoh's daughter uh, was there. And then eventually even his own mom was one that raised him. And God worked it out that way. But because Moses' mother believed in proper placement... For for her son, God blessed his life and used him as a deliverer for the nation of Israel. I want to say to every mom here today, I want to say to every dad as well, this message by, by uh, all stand goes to all of us, applies to all of us. But we ought to do our best to place our children in the will of God for their lives. We ought to do our best to place our children in a good church and around good people and in a good Sunday school class and in a good Bible school and in a good church where people can love them and where people can uh, help to be a blessing to them. Listen, I believe with all my heart that a godly mother, a good mother, a good dad should place their children in the will of God. People don't realize I make great emphasis on the fact of where parents put their children in church. It's important. I think everybody ought to have their children and grandchildren in a church that has a burden for young people. Has a burden for kids. I think every church ought to have a burden for this generation coming up. That's why I spend so much time with them. Listen, I got in at one in the morning from a meeting in Poria, Virginia, but I could not wait to get over and spend time. And a lot of the time we spent, we just spent sitting around having a good time with these young people. Why? Because you have placed them in our care. You have placed them in our lives. And listen, it's important on where you place your children. Amen. Amen. So you ought to pray about the proper school. You ought to pray about the proper college. You ought to pray about everything you do in their lives. Because, listen, you're responsible for placement. 
You're responsible. When that fella brings your girl home or when that uh, young lady says, this is the guy that God's put in my heart, you ought to say, boy, they're going to be placed with this person. I need to make sure this is the will of God. I need to make sure. And you need to pray and seek God's face. And, and listen, I'm telling you, I look at every young couple just like I looked at Ryan and Claudia in a meeting with me last week and I look at them and I say to them, is this God's perfect will for your life? I've had a privilege of Brother Ryan's dad even sending me a message and thank me for being his pastor and thank me for teaching him and helping him to grow. I think that's awesome. Amen. Nothing more that you'd want for your children than to be placed in the right place. Right? When your children are dropped off in that nursery, you want to know you have ladies back there or men that help out sometime with their wives that love them. And, and, and when we, they go back with Miss Tanya, when they go back with Brother uh, Justin, Miss Natalie or whatever, uh, when they go with your youth pastor, you want to make sure they are placed around people that love them. Hey, here's a mother in the Word of God in Exodus 2 that learned about placement. Put your kids in the right place. Amen. Take your Bible. Go to 1 Kings 17. We're going to do a little sword drills all through this thing. 1 Kings 17 and verse number 9. Oh boy, this is one of my favorite moms in the Bible. 1 Kings 17 and verse number 9. You get there, say amen. If you haven't got there, act like you have. Nobody will know the difference. The Bible says, arise, talking to the man of God, arise. Get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. Listen to her reply. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. She said, As far as I know, this mama said, This will be our last meal. Famine's in the land. And we have nothing left. And by the way, this has nothing to do with our preaching. But isn't it interesting that God sends you to the most unlikely places to meet your need? Is that not amazing? You would think God would have sent the man of God to somebody that could have had something to give him. But instead, he sent the man of God. Hey, you know why? Because God wants to show you, boy, I feel a little tough about this. It's not people that are doing it. It's God that's doing it. And God's big enough to do it. And he can use anything to do it. Man, alive, I got cold chills just saying that. Hallelujah. I like him Holy Ghost cold chills. Amen. The Bible says, And Elijah said unto her, verse 13, Fear not, go and do as thou said, but make me thereof a little cake first. Bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste. That means it's not going to run out. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail till the day that the Lord sent rain upon the earth. And she did... And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither the crews of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which he spake to Elijah. They're right in the middle of a drought. God sends a man of God. Now you imagine mama, think about it. You've got just enough for your kid. Even if you don't eat anything, you're a mama. You know what that's like. You've got just enough for your child. And then the man of God looks at you and says, before you do anything for your child, before you do anything for anything else, I want you to make sure that you take care of me first. God sent me this way. And if you do what God said, God's going to honor that. And you're never going to have a problem all the way through this drought. First mama believed in placement. The second mama listened to the preacher. Amen. Can I tell whatever one of you ought to do as a parent? Get your children, your family under some Bible preaching. Get them under the Word of God. Get them under sound. Listen, I, I know Calvary Baptist Church is not for everybody. Some people are weird and don't go here. But I want you to understand, I get your family. I'm kidding, by the way. Get your family in a church where the Word of God is preached. You want your children to sit under the Word of God. 
Nothing bothers me more than to see a parent whose children have been in a fundamental preaching of the Bible and take them out of that and take them away from true preaching from the Word of God. Listen, here's a mama that listened to the preacher. Amen. She did what God's man told her to do. She listened to the Word of God. And by the way, I'm talking about she listened to the preacher when he told her what God said. Amen. I'm not talking about listening to some lunatic in a pulpit that's telling you to do everything that the Bible doesn't even say. I'm talking about listening to a preacher that's giving you the Word of God and that Word of God is getting your life and that Word of God. Hey, aren't you glad you get to raise your children around the Word of God? And I got news for you. If I ever stop preaching this book or change this, change this book, you get your children somewhere away from me. Of course, you better know I went insane. Amen. Something happened to me. Because I promise you this, and they'll give me some medicine put me somewhere. Because as long as I'm alive and I'm sane, the preaching they're getting right now is the preaching they'll get till I leave here. Amen. Make sure. Listen. Get your children around the preacher that'll preach the Word of God. Amen. A mother that listened to the preacher. Go to Proverbs 31 with me. Isn't this one of the greatest chapters in the Bible about a godly woman? Psalm, Proverbs rather, 31. Boy, it's a great scripture. You know, I can see a whole lot in this scripture about my mama. I really can. About Miss Wendy's mama. Miss Wendy's mama was a godly woman. Raised her, raised her after her daddy died on just a meager amount. Raised a good woman, by the way. I'm telling you that. Her mama did a good job. Is that all you asked me to say, Wendy? She did a good job. Proverbs 31. The Bible says, verse 28, Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also. And he prays of her. How many of you men in this church today, glad you got a woman that's a good mama you're married to? Say amen. Amen. How many of you men say amen because God gave you a good godly woman? Right. I'm preaching right. Yes, sir. You know what? Sometimes, don't be listen. I can't stand that. This is, this is my old woman, all that mess. I can't, I can't stand that junk. You know, I know some of you do, and I'm not trying to be mean to you. Bless your heart. But I'm going to tell you this you respect that woman you're married to. You say, Well, I work all day. All she does is stay home with the kids. Yeah, buddy, won't you try that a while? Huh? Right? I got news for you, man. Some of these moms here got three and four kids, working jobs. I, Miss Lady teaches school, got all them youngins, comes home, take care of them babies, does all that. I've seen her dragging them in here before, hallelujah. And I'm thinking, Lord, how mercy. She's got her own bus route. And I'm telling you, she comes in. But I want you to understand, hey, it takes a whole lot to be a good mama. Men, I'm telling you, buddy. Bless your heart. You'll throw money on a table. For somebody, give them a tip. They waited on you. Some woman waited on your table. You don't even tell your wife thank you and she fixes you a nice meal. I'm preaching right. It's got quiet, hasn't it? Hasn't it got quiet? Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm going to tell you right now, buddy. I'm going to tell you straight up front. I thank God for a woman like my wife that my daughter could pattern her life after. I got news for you. I mean this. If my daughter turned out to be three quarters of the woman my wife is, she'll do all right. Amen. I think she's maybe a quarter right now. We got a long way to go. Don't y'all tell her I said that either. Many daughters have done for children, but thou uh, virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favors to see from beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Brother Stacy may be listening to me on the earphones. He in here somewhere, probably. He probably outside. But I pick on him all the time. I mean, I've been his pastor up where the whole 16 years I've been here, or 15, going on 16. And I'll look at him and I'll say, how in the world did you ever get Miss Carol? I just kept, was Miss Carol, what was wrong with her that day? He said, preacher, I don't know. I said, how did you do that? <laughs> hey, man, sweet, kind lady like that. How in the world did you do that? He probably listened to her going, because I'm wonderful. That's what I reckon. I don't know. <laughs> Our first woman's a woman that learned about placement. Our second woman's a woman that learned to listen to the preacher. This third woman is a mother that's worthy to be praised. A mother that is worthy to be praised. The Bible says here in the Word of God, in the Scripture that I read, uh, who can find a virtuous woman for her practice, far from her rubies, her children to rise up and call her a blessing, her husband also, and he praises her. Amen. Can I say something to you, fellas? 
I teach this in marriage counseling. Every young couple seems like I'm ever in marriage counseling most of my life in this church. I teach in marriage counseling. And I want you to listen to me. Here's something I tell them. Don't you ever belittle your wife around other people. Don't you ever say things around other people and belittle your wife. Don't ever run her down. Don't ever talk down. Don't ever act like she's not there when you're around other people. You make sure you know, I let everybody know you've got the best wife. And by the way, look what she got. Can I get a witness? Say amen right there. You let them know that she's a godly mom and you thank God for that lady God's given you. She is worthy to be praised. Amen. She is. I don't have to do that with my wife because my mama does enough of it. My mama is 93, but she's learned that cell phones work in the car where everybody can hear. And so when she calls and talks to me, she say, you want that speaker thing? And I'll say, yes, ma'am. She'll say, is Wendy in there? Yes, ma'am. She'll say, I'll tell you one thing. God's give you a good woman. You couldn't make it about a good woman. She's a good woman. And for the next 20 minutes, I don't say a word. (laughs) Miss Hazel, I'm telling you right, I'm telling you right. Right? Then she say, thank you for calling, son, but you got a good woman. (laughs) Amen? Hey, a mother that is worthy to be praised. Right? I want you to watch this. Go to 2 Timothy 1.5. Check this out. It's a mama's in the Bible, ain't it? I'm telling you. All you women are being conviction run up here in a minute. Say, boy, I want to be a mama like that. Some of you are. Some of you are. Second Timothy, I'm having a tough time. Where's that at? There it is. No, that's first, that's long. Second, there it is. Second Timothy chapter one. Here's a young man getting ready to follow the apostle Paul. Here's a young man, a preacher, getting ready to follow one of God's choice servants. He's passing the torch on to Timothy. And here's what he says. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which first dwelt in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that in thee also. One mother learned about placement. Another mother listened to the preacher. Another mother's worthy to be praised. But here you have a mother in the Word of God that left behind a godly picture. Say, what do you mean by that? She lived a life and the Apostle Paul said, your grandma lived for God and your mama lived for God and they left a good picture for you to live for God. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you mom and daddy something. I preach to young people. A lot of places. have. I love preaching young people. I'm getting old enough. I don't know how much longer that will continue, but... Right now it is. And I'm booked in youth camps for a few years. I love preaching to young people. But I'm going to tell you something. When these children see you have no heart for the things of God and you can lay out of church and you can stay home and you don't want to serve God, I'm going to tell you what it'll do. One day down the road, them young is going to be just like you. Amen. Then you're going to go to them and say, well, I want y'all to get in church. You say, Mama, you stayed out a lot. Daddy, you didn't go. Am I preaching right? That's not the kind of picture you want for your kids. That's not the kind of picture you want for your family. Hey, I'm telling you today, I'm telling you today, friend, moms and dad are set a picture of what it's like. Here's what it's like to live for God. Here's what it's like to serve God. This is the way it ought to be. Set a picture for them in their life. Amen. Amen. Miss Casey, great to have you today. And I know you have a better pastor than me now, but I'm, maybe I'm second anyway. But I want you to say this. I want you to listen to this. Your mama sitting back there is one of the great soul winners love kids that I've ever pastored. I mean, she got a heart for God when it comes to young people. And I think about you. She's left that picture. Listen, she left that picture in your life that you could be a soul winner like that and you could, you could love people like that. And you could, boy, that's, a great, that's great. I mean, I'm telling you. Amen. I think about your little girls. Chris, she's sitting right here. Those little girls, Brother Kenny, you can set a picture for them in their life. Think about your, your, your children, brother. Think about it. You can set a picture for them. Set a picture for them. It's all you can do. You can't make them live for God, but you can at least set a good picture for them. Amen. Amen. You can let them see Christ in you. Yes. Isn't that right? You can let them see Christ in you. And I'm going to tell you something. It matters. It don't just matter when they're 12 and 13 either. It matters when they get 18, 19, 20. It still matters. You don't quit serving God just because your kids are not in the coop no more. Right? A mother that left a picture. Let me give you a final one. Go back to John chapter number 2. This is some of our scripture that we just came out of 
uh, that I'm preaching through the Gospel of John, chapter number 2, verse number 5. Y'all know this verse. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. I want you to watch this. The first mother believed in placement. The second mother listened to the preacher. The third mother was worthy to be praised by her husband and her kids. The fourth mother left a great picture. Follow after your grandmother and your mother. But this fifth mother understood God's power. You know what she was really saying to those guys? She was saying to them, I know you don't have what you need, but my boy right there has got enough power. If he tells you to do something, you better do it. Hey, can I tell you what every mom and every daddy ought to tell their kids and their grandkids? As long as there's a God in heaven, God is able. God has all power. Let me ask you today, I, I, I'll give the message a title. My message title is Great Decisions by Godly Women. Great Decisions by Godly Women. I could have easily titled it Great Decisions by Godly Men. And I could find you me in the Bible that God used. But I will say this to you right now. Apart from maybe your salvation, and I know salvation is the biggest decision we ever make in our life. And I know getting married is huge. I understand that and all that. And certainly marrying in the will of God. And, and of course, if you don't start out right, you're not going to end right anyway. But I want to say this unless God intervenes. I, I want to say something to you. And I want to say this to moms and dads, not, not just moms today. Are you listening to me? Why don't you listen? The greatest responsibility God has given you is to raise your children. That's the greatest responsibility God's given you. You say, well, preacher brother Justin Kimmer, he's got a responsibility for all them young people at Calvary. Let me tell you something. If his wife and his kids ain't where they need to be with God, his ministry at Calvary don't even matter. Because I got news for you. So goes the home, so goes the church. Greatest responsibility that I ever gave you is influence. Listen, you make little with Jesus, you expect them to. You make little with church, you expect them to. You make little living right, expect them to. Because they're watching and they're following your example. There were so many things uh, for my birthday, different things, little things that I got. And, and thank y'all for not buying too many MMs. There were some, but. Hallelujah, that's a whole lot of miles when I eat them things. And I don't want to go that far. But uh, there's a few things. One thing, Brother John, he's got another little business he does. And he makes these coffee cups. I guess can do a lot of different things eventually. And, and he, got, he gave me a coffee cup with a picture of Marvin the Martian on it. And said, uh, this makes me very angry. Now, I could talk like that, but I'm not going to. I can talk just like him. And for $29.95, I'll let you hear it. But anyway, that cup, and I looked at that cup, I couldn't help but to laugh, you know, seeing that. But one of the things I, I really like, I picked up my phone several times and I had some young people call and sing to me and groups of them uh, do that. But Miss Christie's, and she said it had to take 10 takes to get this, but Bailey and Paisley, they... They wanted to tell him happy birthday, sing happy birthday. They, they sing, I can't remember, they sing? I think. They just said happy birthday preacher. Took 10 times to do it. They got it. Here's what I was thinking about. The mom and daddy's raising them to love the preacher. To love God's men. Not an athlete. Not somebody that will let them down and God forbid that we would. To love God's man. To love God's man. Right? When Natalie and Caleb come up here about every week, grab my leg and hug me and tell me they love me. Let me tell you something. 
You raise your children. I'm not talking about Brother Chris. I'm talking about in the fear of God. Teach them that. Teach them that. Teach them to love Jesus. What an awesome responsibility. Miss Amy, you come. Let's stand to our feet, Brother James. Can I ask you a question? I want you all to look at me as you're standing. Can I just address this to moms and dads? I, I think it'd be all right today. Can I ask you this? How many of you feel like as a parent, standing here right now as a parent, that you could come and say, Lord, I could do a little bit better on my children seeing Christ in them. I could see room for improvement, Lord, or God, I just realized as pastor was preaching today the awesome responsibility of my children watching my lives or my life. Maybe God spoke to your heart today about you want to make sure like Timothy when he looked back. Oh, by the way, and all you grandparents, I understand grandparents are a different breed. I've just been around Brother Crabtree enough that I thought would never wimp out, but he did. And I'll say something to you. I know you're going to give them stuff you never gave your kids. You're going to give them some chocolate, some cookies. Oh, they can have that. That's okay. They don't have to go to bed. That's all right. But I'll say to every grandparent, there's one thing you better not ever do. You better not ever look at your kids that are raising your grandkids and say to them, you just got them in church too much. Or they just go to church too much. They're missing out. As a grandparent, you better pray for them grandbabies to get all they can get. Because there's a world out here that wants to destroy them and leave them in the ditch. But there's a God in heaven that wants to make them champions for Christ. Amen. 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 Brother James going to have her invitation. I'll say this to you if you're mom and dad today. You're young. Listen, can I say to all of our teenagers, young people across this auditorium, aren't you thankful? Some of you, aren't you thankful for a Christian home? You don't have to worry about beer cans stepping over them and liquor bottles and drunks in the house. If you do have to worry about that, let me know and I'll preach against it and we'll get that mess out. You, you don't have to worry about your mama not coming home and wondering where she's at. It's a shame today to think about mamas leave their own children. God help us. That might be a woman had a baby, but that ain't no mother. Amen. Some of you young people got a good godly mom and daddy. You better thank God for it. Amen. Well, you just mind the Lord today. Brother James going to sing for us while he's singing. I don't know about you today, but you got an awesome responsibility, friend. Mother's Day 2018, Calvary Baptist Church. I may not have riches as some others may, but I have a mother who knows how to pray. And there may be How many of you had a mama that got you through a tough situation with prayer? I've missed in my youth. How many had a dad got you through a tough time with prayer? I have a father. Sought God and prayed and got you through something. How many of you came home when you wasn't living right? Your mama had been praying for you. I have a goodly heritage. I am Boy, I'm praying for young men to walk across here like Brother Marquise right now. He may have not had a godly home coming up, but I'm praying he'll stay in this church long enough. God give him a wife. He'll have a have good a godly good home one day. Heritage. And that is worth far more to me. And if in the future 
Why don't you my thank parents you pass on Real deal, to Mama, dwell in that city we've come Yo, Mama, to call home. They may not leave me That's right, the Josh. wealth so of baby, this wife, world. How many times she pray for you while you serve your country, some other nation? Got you home. Their God and His word. I have a goodly heritage. I am blessed. You guys love them. I appreciate you. We got some teenagers. Take time with other kids who don't have much in this church and don't have them homes and love on them and do things with them. Can't could not make a preacher proud. Thank God for we we love the underdog. Amen. And that is worth it. Ain't no throwaways with God. To me. Oh, I feel a breath from another world. Hallelujah. So goes the home, so goes the church. Keep Christ the center of your home. Keep God the center of your life. Everything revolves around the center. Amen.